especially after September 11, uh, I was interviewed by one of the two national networks in Canada, the CTV. That was on October 7th, I believe, just on when Afghanistan was attacked. And which is very unusual for a national television, usually the interview for a few seconds or a couple of minutes. They had a full six to seven minutes interview. They said, explain to us, Jihad. So I made an offer for millions watching, and I repeated that in many lectures, that I am willing to pay one million dollar reward, one million dollar, for anyone who shows me a single place in the entire Quran where the Arabic equivalent of holy war was used even once. The Quran was not revealed in English, it was revealed in Arabic. And the equivalent of the English term holy war is what? Harb Muqaddasa, holy war, isn't it? I said, all right, I'll pay a million dollars if anyone shows one single place in the Quran where the term is used. Of course, you know that university professors don't have a million, but uh, I know what I'm talking about. I tell them sometimes, well, if you find it, I'll borrow and pay you the million dollars. No problem. It's a myth. It's a huge myth to speak about that term, so-called holy war. Furthermore, the term holy war is as much contradiction of term as saying devilish angel. This fellow is a devilish angel. It's a self-contradiction. What is holy about war that brings all the bad deeds, death, destruction, disease, distress, displacement? What is holy about war? Nowhere in the Quran do we find even legitimate fighting or form of jihad in the battlefield glamorized. When the Quran speaks about qital, a specific form of fighting, what does it say? كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ Hated act. Lesser of two evils. Never glamorized. The Prophet وسلم, before going to one of the battles, he noted that some of the companions were really itching, so courageous and very anxious to meet the enemy and, you know, clamor them. And he said, no, don't you be so anxious to meet the enemy in the battlefield and seek peace from Allah. Allah salama. But if you have to face the enemy in the battlefield, then persevere and be firm. So the idea is not to be anxious or trigger happy with this. So how could we say that this is holy or something glamorized either in the Quran or, or Sunnah? Then they ask you, but, but isn't that the translation of uh, you know, jihad? D didn't some dictionary say that? All right, those dictionaries are wrong because those oral dictionaries have their own agenda and they have their utter ignorance of the true teaching of Islam. So we tell them, look, you have to understand the term jihad in the light of the etymology of the term, the linguistic origin of the word itself. Just like understanding Islam could not be cleared without getting to the SLM, the origin of the term. Likewise, jihad also, there are three letters, jim, had, dan in Arabic or in English it sounds like jhd. What does it mean? Because jihad comes from it and that's the origin means to struggle and to exert effort. But you have to go beyond linguistics. Just like we did in the case of Islam to look for more substantive evidence from the primary sources of Islam. It's very convincing to just go beyond that. And indeed we find evidence that jihad as mentioned in the Quran <coughs> and Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, appears on three different levels. Individual, social, and combative in the battlefield. On the individual level, it is a common term to use jihad al-nafs, to wage jihad against, some people think jihad means, you know, violence, jihad against yourself. What does it mean? Kill yourself? No. Jihad against oneself means jihad against evil inclination within oneself, attempts at tazkiyah, self-purification, reaching out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is interesting to find that in Surah Al-Hajj, Surah 22, there is a direct connection between an act which is for the Muslim the ultimate expression of humility and peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the prayers and prostration and jihad. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اركعوا واسجدوا واعبدوا ربكم وافعلوا الخير لعلكم تفلحون and what comes next وجاهدوا في الله حق جهاد جهاد is mentioned in the context of individual worship to Allah سبحانه وتعالى reference to zakah جاهدوا باموالكم وانفسكم وجاهدوا باموالهم وانفسهم making jihad with their persons and their money so they, their wealth to give money to the poor is a form of jihad and before I move to the third one one interesting thing that I found you know, non-muslim audience uh, seem to relate to it they laugh and they understand that they get the point and usually in da'wah it should be in a gentle way an example that people can relate to I tell, I tell them that look <coughs> I bet you if you slept one night very late and you're so tired and you have to wake up early in the morning to go to work and of course when you're so tired you must be allergic to morning you're making you people non-muslims are making jihad to leave your bed and wake up struggling to do that I'll tell them that a Muslim who's fasting in the month of Ramadan and goes to work with others and he loves coffee and he smells the nice aroma of the smell of coffee and he loves to have a cup of coffee and he has to resist he's doing jihad then I tell them that some of the people who do not really fully appreciate and understand Islam they make a statement that oh there were five pillars of Islam but then a sixth pillar was added that is jihad I said no jihad is not the sixth pillar jihad is Islam it's the essence of Islam so they just wonder a little bit I said look when you do your prayer when a Muslim in winter is soundly sleeping in a soft warm bed especially in places when you don't get this luxury and heat and all of that and the muazzin calls for the prayer at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning the person must be involved in jihad to wake up and to go to the prayers that's jihad how could it be another pillar it is the essence of salah I mean, one aspect of salah is jihad the same thing for fasting zakah is jihad because one struggle against miserliness or apathy or lack of sympathy with those in need same how who said that this is a sex pillar it's it run through the core of the teaching of Islam and then there is a third level and we should never try to hide anything from Islam what what do we have to hide what are we ashamed of to hide as some apologists do who try just to avoid critique or criticism of the West and say no Islam only is the religion of peace it's only on the individual and social level. no there is also jihad in the battlefield that's qital it could be called jihad but sometimes also specifically it's called qital also it is there so we should not run away from this we should explain it with pride but give also the qualifiers and its true meaning under what condition are Muslims allowed to carry arm and use force only two conditions and I'd be grateful to anyone who gave me conclusive evidence from the Quran and Sunnah of a third I'm not saying that there are not some areas and I come to talk about that inshallah when some people interpret to me now there is another jihad of tamkeen and all of this no within the text of the Quran there are only two clearly conclusive grounds for a Muslim to go to the battlefield both of those reasons are found in the same section of Surah Al-Baqarah Surah number 2 from Ayah 190 to 193 one is self-defense what does it say? وقاتلوا في سبيل الله الذين يقاتلونكم ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين very clear and precise fight in the way of Allah those who fight against you but commit no aggression or you can translate transgression for Allah loves not the transgressors legitimate self-defense a Muslim should not be shy to say there is self-defense in Islam not as a right as a moral responsibility because this is your responsibility to defend yourself, your family, your land, your people. No question about it. I, we have some appreciation of people who are pacifists and say there should be no violence whatsoever. Well, of course, we share their objective, but the reality of mankind is different. So there are occasions where, if Islam indeed is a comprehensive way of life, it should provide guidance to manage conflict just like it manages peace as well. No apology for that at all. All people have done it, all religions have done it. <coughs> but then the second reason is in Ayah 193. 
وقاتلوهم حتى لا تكون فتنة ويكون الدين لله. There is a similar ayah in Surah Al-Anfal as well. We come to it, inshallah, later. Fight them until there is no more oppression. Oppression. And religion belongs to Allah, obviously, doesn't mean forcing people because the Quran said that you can't do it. A deen Allah means people would be free. There is no oppression, especially religious oppression. Anybody who wants to be a Muslim, you can decide on that. You cannot persecute people because they choose to follow one religion or the other. Aggression and oppression. The only two conclusive grounds that you find in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, suppose even the occasion arises where the use of force or going to the battle is necessary. What are the qualifiers for that? What kind of conduct did the Prophet, peace 